Welcome back to Keeping It Normal with Emily. As you know, and I tell you every time, I insert that little clip of music after, like post. What do you call that post? After, while I'm editing the video. So I just dance in my basement with no music. So I talked to a social media mutual, a mom. Her name is Katerina, and I found her on TikTok, you know, of course. And I just really loved her message and just resonated so much with it because she kind of labeled herself as a stay at home mom who hates staying at home. And I thought, I have found my people because that is me. I'm a stay at home mom who after like, I can't spend too much time at home. I just start, you know, losing my mind and feeling suffocated and have to leave. And you're going to listen to our conversation where literally she blows my mind about the reason of why she's a stay at home mom who hates staying at home that I realized is most likely the reason for myself as well. And I've never put two and two together until I heard her say it. And I went, oh, duh. That's exactly why. So you'll hear that uh, wonderful revelation. You'll hear us talk about gender disappointment, hot topic issue, and why we both experienced it. And it's um, and we were on opposite ends of the spectrum in um, why we think we experienced it, how, quite frankly, it's normal to experience it, and just kind of having an open discussion about that, which I think is important because I see a ton of videos just kind of shaming people on the subject. So we talk about that. Um, we talk about, we answer a couple questions that were asked over on my Instagram. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because I do a little Ask Emily segment where you can ask questions that me or me and my guest will answer as we do the show. So I think this is episode not, Oh my gosh, is it nine or 10? Don't, I don't know. I'm thinking it's nine. It's 10. It's nine. Whichever it is, I'm happy to be here. Nine or 10. I'm happy you guys are still here listening. I'm still getting back in the groove. You know that my basement was under construction, putting together the studio. Um, we're going to be hopefully back to getting weekly episodes out, but um, I'm so excited for you guys to hear this Um this conversation. So let's jump right in. So I, I discovered you, I don't remember if it was a specific video, but you do like the zone cleaning. I think that's what brought me to your page. And I was like, in my head, I was like, maybe I should try it. I never did. I was like, that's a good idea. I want to follow along. Save, that- save, save. I won't do it, but save. <laughs> I'm like, that is a smart idea. <laughs> now, do you still do that? Is that how you mm-hmm. have learned? Okay. So explain like what that is. Um, I, don't I don't have a printout right now because my child got water on it, but um, it's, I have a template I made on Canva and it's basically just every day. I, I basically took the blueprint of my house and I like yeah. split it up and I only do one area per day and I do not touch anywhere else in my house. So like Love on it. Mondays, I only do like change the sheets, wash the like bedding, do like wipe down fans and stuff like that. And then I do not touch them the rest of the week. I do not care what happens in that room the yeah. rest of the week, unless someone like has a situation. Right. But yeah, the same, like on Tuesdays, I only touch bathrooms. So I don't feel like I don't know what to do because it's literally written out for me. And there's only like five or six things on each. And it takes me maybe like maybe half an hour max. And I just have to, and, and if I miss a week because like we have something going on or I feel like too, like too much to do it, I know it just got cleaned a week ago. So if it, takes right. two weeks it's okay so I feel like it's so much more manageable that way to mm-hmm. when you're it's less overwhelming probably right yeah I can't my I have like the um all or nothing gene so like mm. if I feel overwhelmed I will not do it so oh, if, yeah. if I like look at something and there's too much I'm like I, I don't even I actually can't even see it <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 I can't out. yeah I can't do it so I have to break it up that way or I literally will never know where to start I think that's so, so great because I think that's such a uh, like that's such a struggle for me too. Mm-hmm. Is like you just where do I start and what am I going to do? And it just becomes you look around and there's so much to do that you're like, okay, I'm overwhelmed and now I'm frozen and now I'm just gonna not do anything. Yeah, I make but the I, joke that the fight, flight, or freeze response. I'm a freeze. I'm, I'm a frozen. Frozen. Yes. frozen. Yes, I just, have uh, no nothing. There's I'm nothing not doing... in the noggin. Yeah. not doing anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
And then um, what I also remember, like what a phrase that you said that stuck out to me was that you were a stay at home mom who hated staying at home. And I was like, I have found my people <laughs> because people think of or I don't know. I, I just I hate it. People think of a stay at home mom. You're there. You stay at home. You don't, you know, maybe you'll go to the grocery store or whatever, but I'm like, let's find an adventure. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of this house, which I think some people might not fully understand because you're like, well, don't you want to stay home with like with your kids? Like, no, I don't. No, I do not. <laughs> I want to get out of my house. So I why, really don't. what kind of, well, and I've noticed that you've also made content about like trying to be better about, you know, about that. But what is it about? Like, is it just your personality? Is it just, because how old are your kids? Four and a half and three. Okay. So you're in the yeah. thick of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They're 18 months apart. And uh, we, yeah. I love it. I love it so much now, but it was not, not uh, yeah. peaches and cream for a long time. No. But uh, those no, close uh, age gaps are great, but then so yeah. hard. My sister and I are two years almost like to the day apart. Yeah. And my mom said the same thing. She was like, it is nuts whenever you're little, like, but it's so nice now because right. we graduated two years apart. We were like really close, you know, I like drove her to school, her first year of high school. And then she drove herself like, you know, kind of, it was back to back situation. But I remember my OB literally told me, he was like, so what's the age gap? And I was like, oh, it's going to be like two, I think it's like two years, the kids, maybe a little over two years. And he's like, oh, that's such a good age gap. And he's like, that first year you'll want to die, but then it gets good. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like, it, it climbs. It's not yeah, I'm just awesome, sitting there like, oh, great. And that's, <laughs> that's great. Um, but are you, you know, I also find it's funny because I'll post a video of myself going somewhere. Like we went to a museum or we went to the park or we went to whatever. And I'm with the kids, just me taking the kids. And so many people are like, I don't like they, that's so overwhelming to them to like be out with their kids going and doing things. Whereas I'm the opposite. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I'm all about it. I'm like, pack up a lunch, get in the car get an extra pair of pants because you never know what's going to happen. And let's go. Because That's, I need to learn that lesson. <laughs> like for someone that leaves their house as much as I do, I need to be better prepared. <laughs> I think I talked about this on one of the very first episodes of my podcast that I did because that's a big, a lot of people found me that way as well, just like from that kind of tagline. Yeah. But um, it started because I was not always this, like I'm, my personality is very like, outgoing and bubbly and whatever kind of thing. I like going and doing stuff. But when my husband and I were first married, we didn't like, we got married at 18, like very, barely 18. Baby. So we literally, yeah, we didn't, we couldn't even go to like a club or like do anything. We, we just kind of hung in. out. <laughs> no, legally we couldn't do anything. We like, cause our, that's a whole other thing. It's like the timeline of all of our stuff is crazy, but we lived in Hawaii whenever we were first married. That's like where we lived for three years, I think my daughter was born there. Wow. But even prior to having kids, we didn't do much. Like we were very much kind of like, we liked to hang out with each other. We had friends obviously, but we weren't like, go do all this crazy stuff. And then I had my daughter, he went on his second deployment, came home. I got pregnant with our son, COVID hit right as we oh. were moving to South Carolina. So oh. we were moving, like we were stopped in St. Louis for I think two months. And in the middle of us being there is whenever everything shut down. So mm. we had to then move from South Carolina or from St. Louis to South Carolina as everything was shut down. So I was trapped, literally trapped at home. Yeah. And I had no friends. I had no family around me. I was fully just alone besides Jake, my husband. But he worked like from 5 a.m. until like 5, 6 p.m. He was, we lived like 40 minutes away from his work because that's like um. where we chose to live at that time. And then I had my son in August and it just got worse. <laughs> like it just got worse because I also then had a newborn. So right. I had an 18 month old with an insane speech delay and a newborn. So I was like Oof. alone. Like yeah. I literally did not have one single friend. I did not have like anything. Cause I didn't, I had nobody, literally nobody. And then I think probably when my son was about one, we had moved again, like closer into his work. And then I was like, I can't be, I can't do this anymore. Like I cannot be in these four walls, even though it's a different house. I can't 
do this. So I started just like literally leaving. Like I would, even with my like one year old and two and a half year old in tow with like literally still in diapers and like Mm -hmm. a little detachable car seat and stuff. I would like go to a park. They couldn't even do half of the stuff, but I was like, I do not care. I cannot be at my house. And it just kind of went from there. And I've ever since then been like, oh, they're better when they're outside. They don't get bored because they're just free. I can speak to other human beings (laughs) and you know, whatever. And they'll actually understand what I'm saying and respond to me. And um, yeah. And then we moved again a year later up here where we're at now. And it's just continued, like just continue. And I've, I've been trying to undo it, but it's hard. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like that just made a connection in my brain that I've never once thought about that, how much COVID probably affected the fact that I'm always on the go now and wanting to get out yep. of the house. Yeah. I literally have never pieced that together, but that is mm-hmm. definitely probably the reason because yeah i'm pretty sure your son is literally only a couple days older than mine so we were in the same you Mm -hmm. know kind of thing with all the pregnancy by ourselves and then newborn whatever in fall and yeah yeah my son was born august 2020 Mm -hmm. um which is that was the year (laughs) that it shut down (laughs) and (laughs) yeah and yeah it was it was going nowhere. I didn't even go to a grocery store. It was just locked down. And you did, you just felt kind of trapped. And that's literally you were talking and I was like, Oh my God, that is (laughs) definitely why. And it hasn't stopped. And it's become almost like a lifestyle where we are home too long and I start getting itchy. I start feeling 36 hours and I gotta go. No, that's yeah. That's probably even past what I can do. It's just, I feel like we've been there for weeks and I have to get out and my skin is crawling and I, yeah, wow. That was like a, uh, well, like an Oprah aha moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just blew my brain a little bit. <laughs> wow. But it's also does seem like, um, it's something that not, I'm finding anyway from talking to other moms that people don't do. They like, it gives them anxiety and it gives them like, it's too overwhelming for them to, to go out and go, yeah. go do things. But I don't know. It's not. I'd rather have chaos out there. <laughs> it's going to be chaos anywhere. Like, no, for sure. And I feel like it's also just like some people's personalities are just bad. Like that's just how yeah. it is. And I don't feel like there's, you know, like a wrong or a right way oh, no. to like do any of that kind of stuff. So it's like, if that's not, I'm never going to yuck your yum. So if you don't want to be at home, don't be at home. But if you want to be home, yeah. awesome. I love that for you. Right. Literally and love I'm it, but... like, I'm not the craft mom. I want to be. I'm just not. <laughs> My mom is literally the craft queen. Like she, I have a three inch binder of a craft book that she made for me. Okay. From all of my childhood. Wow. And I am just now like cracking it open because I, I am such a freaking type a like control crazy person. I can't even like, there's so much stuff in there. She's like, it'd be so fun to whatever. And I was like, yeah, now that they can like glue. And <laughs> I didn't want to do that a year ago. What are you talking about? No, um, I, mean, I don't know what but- it is because I'm not I don't care really about mess. We can clean up any mess. I don't care about, you know, let's have fun. Let's do this, that, you know, you want to be outside and take off your shoes and go jump in a random puddle. I am down, but there's Mm -hmm. something about glitter, glue, scissors, sequins. (laughs) I'm just like, it's just not my thing. I just can't do it. It gives me, it's just too much. It's overwhelming. It's over. That is literally a control thing. I don't know for sure. It's a control thing. 100% I know. (laughs) Are you someone that like they start doing it and then they're doing it the wrong way? Yes. Your yes. brain is like, yes. Mm-hmm. I have to literally talk myself down, like off, off, like the don't glue down that paper for them, Katerina. Please don't do it. She is mm-hmm. four. You need to relax a little bit. We were literally at our children's museum today and she like had a stamp and was like kind of off the paper. And I was like, do not move her hand. What are you doing, Katerina? Why would you do that? What do you, what? I did like, Mm, that's funny but that's why it's you know that's why they say it takes a village so your mom can do crafts with them. I, every time she's here we have like all these crazy things of no that's what she does and she's a teacher so she just oh double whammy is, yeah yeah double whammy yeah my mom that's why my mom was a teacher too she taught high mm. school english but um yeah those teacher teacher moms oh man no oh, they're gosh. ready for we anything like, 
Mm -hmm. we could like fully read before we went to kindergarten and like we oh, yeah. knew like these random vocab words that were like bizarre for like a under five-year-old to know she's like oh, yeah you learned the word summit when you were like three and I was like okay cool. <laughs> Whatever. my mom my mom used to make us prepare like I remember uh there was a rule in the house that you couldn't have more than one video gaming system at a time like you couldn't have a PlayStation and a Nintendo. You could only have the PlayStation mm -hmm. or whatever it was. And my sister really wanted the second gaming system. I, I honestly don't even know what it was at this point. But my mom, like she put together, my sister, a PowerPoint presentation and had to write an essay to my mom persuading her <laughs> to why she should allow us to have the second. That's and me, teaching great life skills. It's, but it's, I'm, I was like, I don't need it that bad. <laughs> It's like so I don't, that is that's not like, I love me. that but not for no I'm like I'll settle for the one I don't I don't that's need that second so one that bad oh my goodness so that's you hilarious. have a daughter and a son mm -hmm. um and I did want to bring up because well for a couple reasons a because I just love when people on the internet or in real life wherever say something that I've been feeling and say it out loud and validate my feelings and um that's gender disappointment Mm, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> people um it's usually followed though i will say by i see a gender reveal video typically it's the husband kind of like reacting and then people are like oh my gosh how could they be disappointed or but it's also a lot of um moms i've just seen a lot of videos kind of shaming the idea of gender disappointment like how could you have gender disappointment why would you, uh, you know, whatever. So I experienced it, you experienced it. And I'd love to just have like an open discussion about it and yeah. show people that you still love your child. Absolutely. I think there's this crazy, I actually was literally talking to my husband about this today. And I have, this has been like my soapbox for the last couple of days, actually, about um, that you can have two things at one time. Like it is not mm. illegal to feel like, overwhelmed but grateful or whatever and blah blah like you can duality is normal and natural and it's something that is it's okay it's okay because there was a graphic that was like circulating on facebook and literally everyone i know was sharing it and it was like oh look at the dirty sink like dishes in the sink as like oh everyone ate today and blah blah, blah. right and i was reading it and i was like okay great i love this like i love this perspective love that i'm i still don't want to do it like i, I still don't want to <laughs> So like, I can feel those things at the same time. It's not like I am now ungrateful because I still don't want to do the dishes. Like, right. I can do that at the same time and it's fine right. and it's okay. Motherhood to me is yeah, like exactly. the biggest example of like duality of all time. Literally. You are constantly feeling two emotions mm -hmm. at one time about so many or things. More. <laughs> no, or more. There's, yeah. Minimum two. <laughs> yeah literally the bear you're probably sleeping and feeling too and then you know at all times minimum but, two you'll hit a max mm -hmm. at some point but yes, um who knows, you had really. uh so when you were first pregnant did you have like a I feel like a lot of people have a I wish I you know I don't care but I'd rather have a boy or girl yes I boy. did too I wanted a boy so bad Really? Um, a so bad. Yes. And yes, your so eldest bad. is a girl. Yes. So yes. that was where your gender disappointment was. Mm -hmm. Was with your first yes. pregnancy? Oh, mine was mm -hmm. my second. Oh. oh so you yes. so what wanted, was it about like why did you want a boy? Like what were your I feel reasons? like my number one thing is because I this is going to get so deep so quickly. I'm so sorry. But um, I literally it. am the too much kid of my family. Like the, mm. oh, she's really, she's too loud. She's too like crazy. She's too blah, blah, blah. I was always told, told to like dial it down. You're, you talk too much, you whatever kind of thing. And my dad really wanted boys whenever me and my sister were little. And um, I think I associated the like me being too much as like girls were not good. So in my head, I was like, oh, in order to, you know, have my full like potential of being a mom, I should have boys because I don't want someone like me. Like I don't want to have 
a girl like me at all because I'm t- I'm too like too crazy, too much to handle, too many emotions, too many whatever. Mm. So boys are good, girls are not, kind of thing. Wow. So yeah, yeah. and and all my life, like we we had all girls in our family. I have a very small family, two cousins, grand total, both sides. Okay, both girls. Oh, so wow. there's four of us. That's it. There were no boys. So I was the boy fill in for everybody. Like I was the one that did sports like most of my life. And I went to hockey games and I, you know, hung out with my grandpa and my uncle and my dad. Like I was the boy fill in for my family. So that just made me want a boy more because I was like, oh, I know what I'm doing. Like, I know I, I, I roll. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. I know what I'm doing. I, I was like, you know, kind of tomboy I was never very girly anyway I was never maternal as a child I didn't like play with dolls or play family ever I did puzzles or I built stuff that's what I did and my mom will even attest to that that I was not a maternal maternal <laughs> child at all and I never did the like oh play my baby th-. never ever and my grandpa passed away I think a month maybe after I found out I was pregnant Mm. and I wanted a boy so bad. Like I literally wanted a boy so badly and I hadn't told him I was pregnant because I lived in Hawaii and I had bought shirts for like all my family and I was going to send it to them and have my sister like record everyone's reactions. And I got the shirts in the mail the day after he passed away. So I hadn't even gotten the chance to tell him. So then I was like, I need a boy as like, like not vengeance is not the right word I'm looking for as like my, my, like the sign from him that I needed to have a boy or like something crazy like that. Yeah. And then I had a gender reveal and it was a girl and I was literally devastated Did you cry? because I just, no, cause at that point I didn't cry very much. Cause I was like too tough and not, right. like, what I but I was so upset, like not, not even in the cry way. I was just mad. I was really yeah. Mad. Yeah. That's a lot and, of emotions tied into that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was. And I and I didn't even realize all this stuff until far later. I'm also, I went to college for psychology. So I like think too deeply about like everything. So this was me thinking about it later that I was like, oh, these are all the reasons that I had this like preconceived notion of all these mm-hmm. things that I didn't even realize was the issue, I guess. So I know that. <laughs> but then, <laughs> yeah, I... I really wanted a girl my first pregnancy and I I had one and I just remember was so excited I just I don't know I just I kind of opposite I think I was like I know how I'm a girl I know what to do with the girl but my my gender disappointment came my second pregnancy because I really wanted another girl and I think it's You're because one of two girls too, right yeah Yeah I have he's a boy but I No you I have really, a sister so oh, there's two. Yeah. I do. And that's what yeah. I was about to say. In my mind, and I'm very close with my sisters. And mm-hmm. and I have two brothers too and love them nothing bad, but we're just not as close. And so in yeah. my mind I've had this beautiful female friendship, wonderful upbringing with, you know, two separate sisters, and I was like she needs a sister. Like she needs this wonderful thing. And, um, and then part of like, I don't know how to, I'm not a boy. I don't know how to raise a boy. And so, um, yeah, I, but in, I, there was some part of me that was like, it's a boy. I just know it. I know it is. But I was like, I really want her to have, you know, a sister close in age and, you know, they'd be two years apart. It'd be so great. And, uh, mm-hmm. and then, yeah, I found out it was a boy and I was like, oh, but then of course you like the moment's over and now I have my boy. And you have your boy eventually too, but like, I don't, I don't realize, like, I don't not realize, um, I don't understand how people think you then like, do they think that you then have the child and you're like, I don't like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like this gender disappointment well, in people find, translate to like, I don't even like this kid. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's more of like just being ungrateful. I think that's where it stems from. Mm. Like that you should be grateful one way or the other. And that's where yes. it mostly comes from because, you know, so many people do struggle with, you know, all a million things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really where it comes from is that they're like, you should be grateful either way. It shouldn't matter. It's true. Um, 
but you know, I've suffered from infertility and I still had gender disappointment. So I think yeah, everybody I has just, room I, yeah. for their feelings. I agree. I just think that's from everything I've seen on people talking about it, that's most mm-hmm. of the narrative is like, you should have cared. You should, you should just be grateful for what you have because the, all those so other things people. and reasons. And again, that's where the duality comes in that I am so grateful. Right. Well, but and it, I still you wanted can, a boy. <laughs> you can, you can see too that I think if you dive into the conversation, just hearing both of our versions of it, it's because we had some sort of preconceived from our own lives of like what yeah. this could be or what it would look like. And so we're going to have our like idea of what would be something we prefer. But of course, it's fine no matter what. And of course, you just want right. your baby to be healthy. And of course, like my son now is like the sweetest mama's boy on the planet. And I can't imagine life without mm-hmm. him. Like I'm not disappointed Same. he's a boy. I, <laughs> me either. And honestly, my kids are the opposite of what I expected like from personalities of whatever because my daughter is not she is she is a lot like me but I love it I love that she's so much like me but my son is like the emotional kind of quieter more reserved a little shy kind of thing as what I thought that a girl was going to be he turned out to be and my daughter is is like crazy she's she is has never met a stranger in her life she is runs off stuff all the time she's nuts love her so much but she's just not what I expected a girl to be, which is unfortunate because knowing what I know now, I feel like I almost feel sorry for myself that I felt that way. Yeah. So I like to ask on my Instagram stories before I post a podcast episode of kind of like an ask Emily and then now my guest kind of a question and people ask for advice and of course again we're just two strangers on the internet we're experts in nothing um but people uh I kind of put the topics of what we're talking about which I did say was like stay-at-home moms who don't like staying at home gender disappointment stuff like that so um someone asked and this is actually a good question so if they're wanting to get better at leaving the house with their kids so what advice as someone, since we are seasoned, uh, <laughs> leaders, get out of the house, stay at home moms, what is something that like, what's a tip that we could give to help people that are wanting to get out of the kids that want out of the house more, but kind of find it overwhelming to kind of like help in that area. I think that having a almost kit of anything you could think could go wrong, have it have the the resource for it in your car extra whole outfit for everybody just in case you never know my daughter's been potty trained for two years but you know sometimes you get an upset stomach and it's all right you never so you, know yeah exactly a first aid kit you know you need that you never know what could happen even if it's much more than a first aid kit could can't could handle it still get you somewhere um so many snacks so many snacks because there's so nothing many. more frustrating than when you're hot and hangry and imagine being four, that's tragic. And yeah, just taking it slow and not putting too much. Don't plan like an eight hour zoo trip for your first outing. Just go to a park. Start (laughs) small, overpack. (laughs) Yes. Start small. Do not pack small. (laughs) Pack like you're going to an eight hour zoo, but go to a park down the road from your house. (laughs) And uh, Start small, pack big yeah I would definitely say have things ready wherever like if you have diapers wipes band-aids whatever put them in a little like storage pocket of your stroller and the car have extra Mm -hmm. shoes have snacks have entered I mean my kids you know do what you want with screen time I throw an iPad in there for a long car ride just prepare Mm -hmm. yourself and think yeah what could go wrong will go wrong and be prepared and just and, drop your expectations, I feel like, oh, yeah. because the higher you expect, the more disappointed you typically are. So put a bare minimum expectation of that everyone remains in good spirits. Not even that, actually. Just that everyone remains intact. That's it. Well, <laughs> that's all we need. That's, and, uh, <laughs> that's such a big thing is that I've had to learn since being a mom is just lower my expectations and yes. don't and just know that something's going to happen. The biggest thing one for me this year was Disney world. (laughs) 
Have you taken, have you ever been to Disney World with your kids? No. Okay. No. I've not been brave enough. <laughs> I, I had to just let go of all. It's, it's really funny because it was like the biggest example in real time of like social media versus real life, which is like what I do because all mm -hmm. you see about Disney World on social media is like the family picture in front of the castle and like everyone's smiling yeah. and they're holding balloons and it's just like, wow, it's such a magical place. But then you're actually in Disney World oh my God. <laughs> and everyone is crying. The parents don't like each other. <laughs> everyone is fighting and snipping. <laughs> Oh my goodness everyone's uh, swearing everyone's crying because people have paid all this money to go and they're like we're gonna have a good time damn it we're gonna have and the most magical freaking time of our life have the most magical freaking time and like and literally it's but it's universal it's like the experience mm -hmm. but it just reminded me like even if you're going to the to the children's museum or to the park and your kid has a massive meltdown or something happens and you have to leave it's just it it happens it happens yeah and it's okay absolutely and yeah it's it's literally okay like the, no one i think honestly a lot of my not apprehension but i'm always really concerned honestly about like what people think of me because i'm just like you know, a girl if i'm being <laughs> honest and i am always concerned and i get really like embarrassed and flustered very easily but I just have had to learn to just literally not give a singular shit about what other people possibly think of me. And also that they probably have also dealt with this at some point. And they probably honestly just like feel sorry for me and not in like a, oh, you poor little, probably just be like, oh, dude, that sucks so bad. I'm so sorry right. that you're dealing with it. In there. Yeah, yeah. And I try my hardest when I see, you know, like people with younger kids than me, because at this point, our kids are like, kind of older and not like babies anymore and right. we're like the seasoned ones we, like we looked up to whenever our kids were tiny which is terrifying i'm not qualified but no i no. literally saw a girl at the children's museum this morning and her child was just like melting down after, melting down after everything and i was just sitting there and i was like i just feel so bad i wish i could help you or do something you know but there's nothing i can do and if i said something who knows how you'd react so i don't know say anything but i just yeah, I try so hard to not like be the person I was afraid of, you know, whenever mm -hmm. I was taking my kids out of the house. Like that's the last thing I want to be is someone that's like unsupportive or even in my own head, not even doing anything out loud, just in my own mind. I don't want to, you know, be like, oh, because hmm, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. I always just try to throw out like, a, I've been there. <laughs> like you're doing yeah. great because it I is. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Feel bad for you, dude. <laughs> yeah, you feel like every eye is on you and you get hot and flustered mm -hmm. and start then it's sweating. really yeah and then it's really hard to like regulate you know your kids freaking out and then you start feeling embarrassed and all eyes mm -hmm. on you and like that overwhelming and so yeah it's great advice to just know that 99.9% .9 of people have been there are not judging you yeah. don't care are feeling bad for you like in a sympathetic way. And if they way. do care, it's gone in five seconds. Like it's, and, it's and really like, they're not never... gonna go home later and be like, that mom was tragic. Like that is not gonna happen. No. And if it is, and... that is a big problem for them and not you. So. Yeah, you'll never see them again. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Everyone has, if they have children, have experienced that moment yeah. or moments. Cause so likely many they're... of them. <laughs> so many. <laughs> so many moments so many. <laughs> I have so many like that yeah mm -hmm. I remember we went to um this play it was it was like a amusement park basically designed though for like young children like eight and under and it was really cool but my son was just like not having it it was a lot of people it was 90 degrees and when I say like he cried like for two hours oh. like he cried the whole time yeah. and he was in um a screaming phase so like a blood curling um just screaming really loud and when I say like he screamed so loud and 30 people's heads whipped around thinking probably that he was injured or something and I literally I was just like he's fine and <laughs> I swear he's okay I'm not like, but he is okay. like I was like, he's fine. He's fine. And I just had to go about my business. But again, it's like, I'm never going to see any of these people again. No, and never. he, I mean, he eventually 
calm down when we get back to the car. But I mean, it passes, it passes. So if you're just remember that, because I feel like that is one of the reasons that people don't want to take their kids out is because they're afraid of that moment happening. Mm -hmm. Um, But just know, like, I don't know, A, it's a rite of passage, you know, you just got to go through once, Mm -hmm. but it's okay. And it happens to everybody. And people aren't judging you as much as it feels like, or as much as you think. You're a lot more critical of yourself than others are of you. So like most things in life, right. it fits <laughs> everywhere. Oh, someone. Okay. So someone said, it's kind of the same thing about gender disappointment. Basically like they were feeling maybe a little hurt because their husband was disappointed that they weren't having a son mm-hmm. and like advice on that. I think it like just listening to kind of what we said, I feel like let him have his moment and It'll probably be just fine when the baby's born. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have the opposite, not, not opposite. Cause my husband would not have been mad if we had a boy first, but he loves being a girl dad. And he was ecstatic whenever we found out we were having a girl, which is right. very different than typically what, you know, people think yeah, that men will type. want. Yeah. But he was so excited and like from the jump, so excited. And I was like, you're not, <laughs> you're crazy. Uh, I'm not, but okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just, you know, it's kind of like how we talk to our kids. Like you can let him, let him feel his feelings and let him, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, that doesn't really change anything. And um, yeah, I mean, it's- I, yeah, I think there's just that idea. And I guess, I mean, maybe it, it happens in some instances where you are disappointed and then you don't like your kid. I don't know. I don't feel like that's the normal situation. I feel, but I feel like, like uh, it's not going to equate to that. Like people no. just realize it's more like what we said before, someone's own something that they're feeling or preconceived idea of a good relationship they've had or something they're comfortable with. Yeah. And it's not really at an actual place of like, I don't like the fact that this is a yeah. boy or a girl. It's kind of the same as like the expectations of going out, you know, like you have mm-hmm. this expectation and then it maybe doesn't meet it. And so you're just don't know what to do. And the only thing you can think to do is just like be upset. <laughs> about right. it. And it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to like, yeah. it's, you know, you, you get pregnant and whether it's you or your spouse or whatever, and you have this now almost like picture in your head of what you think, you know, like your family mm-hmm. and whatever's going to look like. So it is, it's hard to like almost come down from what you thought you were going to have, even though you didn't know you were going to have, like, it wasn't a concrete, no, you were going to have it, but you have this picture in your head whenever you're pregnant before you find out, you're like, oh, if I have a boy, it's going to, you know, whatever kind of thing. And then to just right away, like you find out you're pregnant and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, now I'm thinking of what all that could bring to the table. Yeah. And that's part of it. I mean, it does, it does like, you know, not, not that it's so crazily different to like raise a boy or a girl, but you know, it does kind of like shift things in different directions depending on, you know, just a, a million things. So right. the way you thought you maybe were going to be going, you pivoted. So, there yeah, I, would, I would say meet that with some grace of, of just kind of understanding that yes. it's just feelings and it's just probably a mm-hmm. breaking a perception of what someone had of what something was going to be like. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. And yep. that, that baby will pop out and no one is going to care what is what. And they're just going right. to love the baby. And I'm a, a big communicator. So obviously mm-hmm. I talk to them and figure out the root. Like what was sure. the, what was the root of the disappointment? You know, cause some people right. it's simple as like, Oh, I just thought that. And it's like, okay, well it's not, it's not, yes. so, it's not <laughs> you know, but if there's something deeper, like deeper seated that maybe isn't going to be fixed in the next like seven months or something that you have, that's something that actually should be addressed because some people that is really truly what yeah you know, is in their head. But right, I'm a big communicator. That's all I do is communicate, talk. So. talk. Yeah, talk and out. then it'll 99.9 percent of the time be a work out. Yeah, Just and be great. Your kids to the store. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably most likely still leave with what you came with, but you probably froze up. Yeah, but it's okay. it'll be fine. Well, yeah, I just want to thank you so much for being on my podcast and having an open discussion about these things, because I think it, it just makes conversations easier when people hear people talking about it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I have been fangirling basically since you followed me like however long ago, because oh I saw you like, like a couple of my TikToks and I was like, is this is real right now? And then you followed me and I literally probably shot my pants. 
what? But it's it's good. Oh my goodness. It's good. And I I'm really gonna appreciate it. I'm going to link all of your social media, your podcast, everything can be found in the description of um, wherever you're listening this to. So please go give her a follow, listen to her podcast as well. And um, yeah, I just want to thank you so much again. And I hope you have a wonderful night. Yeah, thank you too. Bye. <laughs>